Alright folks, we're looking at evidence for the resurrection of Christ. We looked at the history of skepticism against Christ, that, but let's look at present day scholars and atheists or in modern times who try to think about Christ. We read, we find the British rich scientist Richard Dawkins that thinks that Jesus is a product of the later church, a mythological figure who might have existed. He gives no analysis of any historical data in depth. Uh, page uh, 119 to 122, The God Delusion, to back up his claims. And when he comments on the history of the church, he uses in the main secondary sources and does not know the few primary sources he quotes, i.e. Gospel of Thomas. Second, the British journalist and writer Christopher Hitchens, 13th of April 1949 to 15th of December 2011 in his book God is Not Great, page 50, 51, 60, 64, 68, 89, 06, 109 to 23, 127, 128, 130, 152, 158, 159. In his polemic attack on Christianity, Hitchens' conclusion is that Jesus was an avatar of Seth's Gnostic invention who makes more sense than the early church fabrication of a historical Jesus. He spends most of his time attacking the birth narratives of Jesus, rely, uh, relaying the scholar, relying on the scholar Bart Ehrman for his evidence. Hitchin does not engage with any mainstream scholars who would disagree with Ehrman. Hitchin puts the fourth Gospels along the same date as the Gnostic Gospels, failing to realise the Gnostic Gospels quote the four Gospels, thus making the four Gospels much earlier in their production. The four Gospels are 1st century and the Gnostics in the main the 2nd century who wrote the Gospels by Timothy McGrew, lecture on YouTube channel Apologetics 313. Hitchin shows no awareness of the culture of 1st century Judaism and, that relate, and what relates to Jesus' studies. When he does comment about Jesus, most of the time he sees him in the context of power where religion is one of control. This highlights his, Hitchin's Marxist influence in understanding history. Third, the American writer Sam Harris, in his book The End of Faith, page 35, 96 to 97, 82, 83, 156, 57, 158, 241, 254, he sees Jesus as a Jew, but politicizes him at every turn. He understands Jesus' divinity and death as a political tool used by the church against the Jews as a theological anti-Semitism. Jesus' birth is but a Catholic invention, which is hang-ups about sex that we have had for 2,000 years in the West. It is no accident that Sam is a secularized Jewish atheist and would see Jesus the way he does. Again, Sam makes no effort to really understand the historical Jesus, but in his historic and in historical context. He, see, he engages with no scholars who would disagree with him on his comments of Jesus. It is a one-sided, highly politicized broadside against religions. Finally, Michael Onfray, the French philosopher, in his book Atheist Man Manifesto, page 115-127, said Jesus' existed. existence has not been historically established. He makes great sweeping claims but fails to cite scholars and evidence to back up what he says. He has even been noted to get his facts wrong. He said there are an incalculable number of contradictions and improbabilities in the body of the text of the Synoptic Gospels. He then notes crucifixion victims were not put to rest in tombs, Jews were not crucified at this time, but solid evidence contradicts the French philosopher Josephus. The Jews are so careful, this is an ancient historian, the Jews are so careful about funeral rites that even malefactors have been sentenced to crucifixion are taken down and buried before sunset. Josephus, Jewish War 4, 317. So we have looked at four new atheists. We find these facts about their understanding of Jesus. All four do not do anywhere near extensive study of the historical source material about the life of Jesus. All four ignore engaging with scholars who might disagree with them. All four have a polemical agenda against religion. They tend to read the life of Jesus in the light of their political struggle against religion in the present. They tend to attack the virgin birth and see that as the main evidence against Jesus being a real historical figure. The rest of Jesus' life is superficially treated only to make a political point against religion in the present. This can hardly be seen as a fair objective historical treatment of the life of Christ. 